What's up everybody? Welcome back or to the channel. So today we got something going on that's either going to go horribly wrong or it's going to be the start of a new hobby of mine. What I'm going to be doing is teaching myself how to paint. So I figure I'm going to start off with a small project and get used to what I got to do because I've never painted before, but I've always wanted to learn how. So that's what we're going to do today. Let me show you what we're getting into. Okay, so here's the goal. I have two custom grills that I had made for my trucks. Now these are custom made with multiple layers and this is all raw aluminum, all right? Now what's nice about the raw aluminum is I really don't have to worry about it rusting. The only thing that might rust over time are the actual bolts that holds everything together. But whenever that starts to happen, I'll probably just have to get different bolts or paint the bolts or cover them with some kind of clear coat to help reduce that from happening. But what I've done was since I have two of these, I have one fully assembled that I have off to the side. And then I have the other one over here that has been taken apart. Now again, everything's flipped over. So these are the backs. So that's the main grill. That's another piece that goes on top. This over here is the outer lip. This is actually the name that'll actually look like that. Okay. So what we want to do is paint them in a couple different layers. And here's my brackets. So the first thing we got to do is we're going to take some mineral spirits and wipe everything off just to make sure that there is no um, contaminants or oils or dirt still left on the metal. So that's going to be step one. Now I've already got my air compressor tank set to the PSI I need. I have my paint gun sitting over here. I mounted this um, paint gun stand on the wall, which is really nice. I could just kind of sit it there. And then it has the swivel top where I can actually put my uh, filter cones in when I'm filling it up. So that's kind of cool there. Now I've already cleaned the gun, wiped a few of the parts off. And I do have a little bit of the mineral spirits inside the uh, container here that I'll spray through to make sure the nozzle's nice and clean. Now this is a digital pressure gauge. It's not a regulator. So I do probably want to get a new one that actually allows me to regulate the pressure. But this at least allows me to see what's going through the gun. And this is actually going to be the LT100 HVLP paint gun. Now, if you've never seen it, it's gonna come in a box like this. Now, what's nice about this particular gun and why I went with it is because it operates on a lower CFM rating. Now, I believe this one here will actually operate as low as 4.25 CFM at 30 PSI, which my compressor here is more than that because my compressor here at 90 PSI is 5.1 um, CFM, but on lower PSIs, that rating is a little bit higher. But I went with this gun here because I didn't know what tank I would have or how long I'll have it or whatnot. So I wanted a gun that actually had a lower CFM rating, which allows me to work with pretty much anything. And I have my paint mask here with filters so I can actually breathe in here while I'm painting. Okay, and the paint that I'll be using is gonna be this Duplicolor paint shop. So it's already pre-mixed and ready to go. So I don't have to worry about thinning it and so forth. Because again, for my first time painting, I wanna just kind of get used to the gun and how to paint and learn the techniques. So I wanna get used to all that before I start getting into learning all the techniques of thinning paint. So I actually have two cans of primer, two cans of gloss black, and then I have one can of the clear coat just to kind of top it off at the end. So the goal is I'm gonna prime everything front and back first. Once I have everything primed, I'm gonna go ahead and paint these two parts, front and back, gloss black. These parts over here, up here, these are gonna be paint matched. Now, I have extra paint over here, which this one here, yeah. This one here is actually the paint match for my lifted gray truck over there. So this is the actual exact paint match to that. So I'm gonna use this to try to paint that. So the goal is, we're gonna have everything gloss black. We're gonna have some paint match uh, parts here, and then we'll put it, we'll hit it with a gloss over top at the very end. And then eventually, after I get all this done, I'll start working on that one over there. That one's gonna be paint matched more to this uh, Delmonico red truck. Which same scenario, I have the paint match for that. So it should work out. And again, this is a front grill. I expect it to get beat up over time, taking on road debris, so I don't expect it to be perfect. Now, I was gonna powder coat it, 
but I don't have a, a powder coating oven right now. So, and I don't feel like spending $400 plus powder coating each set of grills. So I figured for a very low cost, I'm going to start teaching myself how to paint. And then if it goes good, I can start taking on more painting projects and doing more things down the road. But for now, we got to learn the skill first. So this is my first time ever doing this. So the first thing I'm going to do is start working on cleaning these parts. And then we're going to work on uh, setting up the gun, shooting a couple shots onto this cardboard just to get a uh, idea of how to adjust the fan shape. And then we're going to start priming. So let me get into that. So we got them cleaned off with just a regular terry cloth rag and some uh, mineral spirits here. So let me go finish the other two parts over here on the floor and I'll wipe a few of those off. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna go over a couple things real quick on the gun. I have the gun mounted over here on the stand just because it's easier to film and point at things at the same time. But obviously you're gonna have your, um, your air cap, which is gonna be on the front, okay? So let me just grab it here and show you. So in the front tip here, okay, that air cap on the front, typically you want that in a horizontal line. That way your fan of paint coming out will be vertical. So that's number one. Number two is gonna be your fluid control knob, which is gonna be back here on the back. Now again, you're gonna to have to adjust your fluid knob based on the paint you're using or the viscosity of, you know, the thinness of the paint. So you're gonna be making adjustments to that knob till you get the pattern that you want in the spray that you want. But do make note that a lot of these guns have numbers on the back. So once you do dial it in to what you wanna do, just make note of it for future reference. Okay, so that'll be your fluid control knob on the back. Then you're gonna have your fan control knob on the top. That's gonna to control, I guess, the size and shape of the fan pattern of your paint that's gonna come out. So typically you wanna just do a spray test on maybe some cardboard or something like that and just get one quick little squirt just to see the shape of the um, fan. That way, if you need to make adjustments to it, you'll make adjustments with that knob. And then the bottom knob here is just gonna be your air control. So even though you have uh, you know, your pressure set from your compressor, maybe a regulator here, this knob right here can just adjust the air. That's really just for fine tuning your airflow. So I have mine fully open, which is counterclockwise. So I have it fully open just because again, I don't know enough yet about how to fine tune this. All I know is that I know how to make a few adjustments as needed and we're gonna just try it, it's a trial and error. Again, I'm not a professional painter, but this is what this is all about. That's what my channel is all about. Learning new techniques and learning new skills and trying new things so that you can do a lot of this yourself and not have to pay everybody top dollar to do it for you. So that's the purpose. So everything's ready to go. So let me go ahead and we're gonna fill up the uh, reservoir here with a little bit of the primer and we're gonna start spraying and see what we got. Now I do have the garage door shut just because it can get a little windy outside, but I do have the windows open for a little bit of ventilation and I will be wearing my painting mask here. So we should be good to go. Okay, so, so we got the cap open on the primer. It's already been mixed and ready to spray. Now when I start getting further into creating custom paints, you could buy something like this, which is a strainer, which it's a counting tool that allows you to test your viscosity of your paint. Okay, so I already have my uh, 190 micron um, filter here that you pour your paint in and it actually will filter any micro contaminants or little tiny particles that might clog up your gun. It's gonna filter all that out. Now I have about half of this reservoir filled. We're just gonna start with that and we're gonna put the cap on and we're gonna see how far it goes. Overlap. 
Okay, so we'll start there. And as you can see here, it has a nice coating to it. Now again, that is just the first spray. I'm gonna do all the backs with probably two coats, and then we're gonna do all the fronts with at least two coats. So, so far, so good. I'm gonna let this dry, and we're gonna be coming back here shortly with the gloss black. Okay, so the rattle can looks pretty good. It's the metallic flake. I don't think, I don't know if you can see it with this the light. It has a nice metallic flake to it. That'll be that gray metallic uh, that, that matches my truck. That's coat one. I have enough in the can to do coat two. And once we're all done, we'll do everything with the uh, clear coat. But overall, the color turned out pretty good. So then we're just gonna get these couple coats of black, another coat of the metallic gray on that. So once we get all that done, we'll come back later once everything's dry, we'll throw a couple coats of clear coat on there and it should be good. Okay, so we're back and we got the front top pieces painted with the rattle can with the uh, paint match paint. Turned out pretty good. And then and we got a couple coats of paint on the front of this main grill bracket. This one though is not, I'm gonna have to fix that one because this is the one when I had it flipped up the other way, it stuck to the tarp and it, it like damaged the paint a little bit. So I'm gonna have to fix that with uh, my sander here. So I'll get that going maybe later tonight or tomorrow morning, I'll work on getting that sanded down. Let me actually show you what I'm talking about. I don't know if you can see it, but you see that little bit of right here? A little bit of that and a little splotch right there. So a couple little damaged spots here, mainly because it's stuck to the blue tarp and it damaged the paint. So I'm gonna have to do a, a, a wet sand on this one here and maybe do another coat or two of the black let that dry and then we should be able to clear coat, but so far it's looking good. Now this is what I'm not sure I wanna do yet. The goal was to take this right here, which is to match the truck, and that's gonna lay across the front here with the black and the background. But I'm just not 100% sure if that's gonna to be too dark, but I don't know, I'm working on it. So, so far so good. Um, this is not easy. I'll be the first to say this is a lot to learn and um, 
it's, it's definitely a skill set that takes time to master. So for all of you out there that actually paint professionally, hats off to you because this is, this is definitely a skill set that requires time and patience and prep work is key. Luckily, this was raw, smooth aluminum, so I didn't have to do a whole lot, but I'm gonna have to take some time to do a little wet sanding, uh, buff out some of the um, you know, orange peel and work on that. But overall, for my first time painting, I'm learning a lot. And obviously, that's what my goal was, to learn. Doing this grill, I'll be a little bit more prepared for when I start that grill for my wife's truck. So, so far, so good. Okay, so I just used my orbit sander here and did a real light, smooth scuff to the top, took out some of the blemishes, and then I'll have to hit that again with a, probably another two coats of the black tomorrow just to kind of go over it again. But that was my mistake. I should have probably painted everything on one side first and then went back over and did the, the opposite side second. But I was going back and forth and back and forth all day and I actually must have flipped it over too soon and the paint stuck to the tarp and it actually created a lot of blemishes in the paint. So I just went ahead and sanded it and I'll go back over tomorrow with a couple more coats. Once all that's done, we'll start clear coating everything, but everything so far, I mean, look at that. Everything else so far turned out pretty good. Okay, so we just went back through, gave it a nice couple coats of paint. We'll let that dry overnight. So then tomorrow we'll go ahead and clear coat everything and then we'll put it all back together and then we'll be ready to mount it on the truck. Okay, so we're back and everything is painted. Now we're gonna throw a couple coats of clear coat on. Now the front grill plate here is still not perfect. Uh, I tried sanding it and repainting it and you could still see some blemishes. Now the blemishes are definitely better than they were but they're still not completely gone. But I ran out of black gloss paint, so I wasn't just going to stop the entire project just to clean up a couple blemishes. So I figure I'm just gonna run it like it is for now, and maybe down the road, maybe I'll rip the grill back off and powder coat it or paint it something else different. But for now, we're just gonna move forward with what we got. So let me go ahead and get a couple coats of clear coat on here, and then we'll be back. Okay, so we got all the clear coat on, and as you can see, it has a nice gloss to it okay so all that turned out pretty good again this front piece still has some blemishes but i think once i put some of the other parts on it it'll kind of hide them a little bit so it should be okay and it'll look good enough for me for now again i'm not a professional painter this was my first time ever painting so i wasn't expecting perfection uh, but again, I'm learning as I go, and the more that I paint, the better I'll get. But for now, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. So I'm going to let this all dry for the rest of the day. I'm going to come back later tonight. I'm going to put everything back together, use all the bolts that were supplied, and bolt everything back together. And then what I might do is once it's all reassembled and put back together, I might spray one more quick uh, clear coat on top of the whole thing, including the bolts, just to give the bolts a little bit more protection as well and hopefully stop them from rusting a little bit. Okay, we are back. We took the pieces and we sat them together. So that's basically what it's gonna look like for now. Now I just gotta go put all the bolts in. Now what I did do is I went to uh, Lowe's and I picked up some of these nylon washers. These are the 5 16 there's four in a pack, again, really cheap. I wanna use that on the outside paint so that the bolt is not touching the metal. There's a little bit of a nylon washer protecting the paint just a little bit. So I have a whole bunch of them in here and we're gonna go ahead and put all the bolts back in and get it all mounted. And once it's all done, I might do one final coat of a clear coat and that's basically what it's gonna look like. Okay, so we're back and we got everything put together and we got all the bolts in and we got a final coat of clear coat 
sprayed on the grill. So let's take a look at it. There we go. So again, for my first time painting, it did turn out pretty good. Now there are still a few blemishes on this outer rim right here. That's that one that had the blemishes from the beginning. The only way I could have fixed that was sand it all the way down back to the bare metal and start over, but I didn't have enough paint to do that. So I just scuffed up what I could with the 600 grit sandpaper and then repainted with the little bit of paint that I had left over. And uh, everything turned out pretty good. Now, would I have preferred to have this powder coated? Absolutely. I think the powder coating is gonna be stronger and better and resist scratching and damage over the long term? Absolutely. But again, I didn't have the money to go out and spend another $400 per grill to have it powder coated, but I am looking to get into powder coating in the future here. So I figured for a small investment in paint, I'd rather paint it, buy me some time, and then eventually I'll repowder coat it myself. And then that'll give me another video to do in the, in the near future on teaching myself how to powder coat. But for now, I'm pretty happy with it. It looks pretty good. Now again, a little bit of scratching there on the edge of the paint, but not much I could do about that. But overall, it turned out pretty good. Okay, so that is what it looks like on the truck. Again, I'm not 100% sure on the color scheme of the black and gray, but at least it looks pretty good and it looks a little bit different. Again, the whole goal was to try something different for this year to make the front end look a little different than I did last year. So as you can see, it did turn out pretty good. I mean, I got that little blemish right here, right on the edge, but it's not too bad. And this is actually a full grill replacement. So it actually replaces the full outer edge as well. But it looks pretty good. And another reason why I chose to paint this is because I'm not 100% sure what color combination I actually want. Now again, this probably only cost me roughly $50 in paint to paint this myself. But I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure I really like this color combination or not. But if I would have paid three to $400 having this powder coated this color, then I wouldn't want to waste that much money starting over with a different color combination. So again, painting this was a good starting point for me to get an idea of what color combination I want to go with. So overall, it turned out pretty good. Is it perfect? No, I made some mistakes along the way. I learned a few things and there are a few blemishes that are still visible. But again, it looks good enough for now. And again, my goal was just really to start learning how to paint. And that's kind of what this project was meant to be. I wasn't expecting perfection. I was actually expecting a lot worse uh, of a turnout, but overall it turned out pretty good and I'm pretty happy with it. But again, this was just more of a learning experience for me to get me used to painting and get familiar with the techniques. And hopefully the more and more I paint, the better and better I'll keep getting at it. So that's it, everybody. I hope this video helped some of you out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button and like this video. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section and I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And if you could do me a favor, please subscribe to the channel because it definitely helps me out. Again, it lets me know that you like the content that I'm putting out there for you and it just encourages me to keep putting more and more content out. So again, I just wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you. I truly appreciate you all. Thank you, and as always, see you in the next video.